Yo. <laughs> the hairline good, bro. We good. <laughs> Yo, how do I pin? Oh, okay. there we go. Ero, we're going to start up in a minute. Hendo, what up? Appreciate y'all taking y'all time out. Y'all could be watching a uh, horse <laughs> on the NBA, but uh, y'all here with me. How I sound? Jim Ice, what up? He is risen. Yes, sir. What up, Ice Baby? Um, trying to get a couple things on here really quick. Got my name looking crazy right there, Ice Baby. Let me put some... Uh, Some vibe music on right now uh, while we wait. Getting this pen tweet up, you know what I mean? Shout out to Jake One. Poops, yo, poops. Get this in there, my man. All right, Jay, about to send you a request. Could have been anywhere, but you're here with me, my man. What's up? What's Trey? going on? How What's you doing? Man, I'm good, man. I appreciate you uh, taking the time out to uh, hang out with us tonight. I mean, it is my pleasure. And, man, I'm really getting to see how bad I need a haircut right now. Jeez. Nah, man, you got the, you got, you got the uh, Robin Thicke shit going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's, that's cool, man. Uh, before we get started, man, I wanted to let a lot of people know, like, this is our first time ever talking. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to jump on some of the hoops pods well, yeah, the podcast here and stuff. there, but like uh, in terms of like a one on one, we're about to like get into it. Yeah, for sure. This is the first time, man, other than yeah, trash yeah. talk. Yeah, man. About that's, hoops. That's crazy, man. He's been trying to build that up, man. Man, but I, I definitely, definitely appreciate this. Uh, definitely had been running this idea for a long time, and you had, you know, you, you jumped on it like, yo, 
definitely want to do it. And, you know, I had put it on a pause for a little bit because we had other stuff going. Um, but the family's good. Every, everybody's good. Everybody's good. Uh, you know, we're over in New York, so obviously it's it's a little crazy over here. It's crazy right. in a lot of places. Um, you know, we have a little boy about to turn one. So uh, One already? I, I can't believe we were talking about yeah. it at dinner. It's like, man, how quickly a year has gone by. But I, I mean, I'm running out of tricks. I, I, I like... I've been throwing a ball at my wife in slow mo, and she ain't looking to catch her off guard. Like I'm finding all sorts that. of ways. I caught that, man. Oh man! But uh, yes. everybody, thankfully, is healthy and happy, and I hope everybody who's watching right now too is taking care. And uh, I'm determined to be more social when this is over because I usually like to not do stuff. So this, right. I, 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 that excuse is gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, definitely. I think everybody's just gonna break loose and and find a way to uh, appreciate the things a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Got to. Yeah, man. All right, man. Well, I mean, a lot of people are filling in right now. Um, I think we can start with this. Uh, this, I mean, it's the one of the two. Uh, my director, producer, Jason Madison, uh, came up with this idea. This is just kind of like an icebreaker before we get into the deep conversations. Okay. Um, so you can say... All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you these topics: PlayStation okay. or Xbox? Xbox. Okay. Because of the Summer. controller. Because of the controller. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if you're kid friendly, but weed or alcohol? I I, I mean, alcohol right now. I mm -hmm. wish it was weed though. I'm all I'm off for right now. I'm taking a little break <laughs> and. The combo of both aren't great for me. So right. alcohol right now, um, but weed will be like a comeback at some point, like Rocky. I think I think once it becomes medicinal everywhere, then it, it won't be frowned upon like that. Exactly. Right, uh, summer or winter? Oh, summer all day, especially yeah, yeah, being yeah. back I, in I, New York. I can't York. stand the cold. I think people that live in uh in the cold weather has mental illness. <laughs> Although. As far as sleeping, winter. Like, I, because I hate sleeping when it's hot and I hate right. having like the air conditioning running on it. So, winter sleep, perfect. Okay. Um, LA or New York? <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is the conversation that I, my wife and I have like every night. I mean, I still lean LA. She got to remember, mm -hmm. I was in LA 20 years and I grew up right. in Brooklyn for 20 years and now we're back in New York. And it's mainly because of the weather, um, but it is good now with a with a little kid being back around family and my wife's family's close. So I still lean L.A., but the boss got us here, man, for a minute. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Biggie or Tupac? Biggie. And again, but I, I mean, love Pac. Right. 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 I think, I, hey, last night, I think a lot of, I don't know if you got a chance to tune in to Riza Pre. I did, man. I did. I did. And a lot of people sleep on Long Kiss Goodnight. And and that was that was crazy. Like I I've been busting the, the, the hipster beanie for a minute. So I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, Big could drop that right now and it'd be you know, I mean it'd be actually a thing. So So obviously for me it's the Brooklyn thing too, you mm -hmm. know. I mean I actually always even say like the Nets you know, they got like, there's like a Captain America statue down there by Barclays because, you know, he's from Brooklyn in the original comics, or I believe so. Mm -hmm. They got to get a statue of Biggie down there, man. I know I've heard like Jalen Rose talk about this. Like, they need a statue of Biggie. Oh, yeah. By no, I mean, if you're doing, if you're doing Coogee themed jerseys, you definitely got to get a statue down there. For sure. But I mean, I obviously have nothing but respect for Pac as an artist. Love Pac almost as much as an actor. Like, when I saw Juice when I was like 14. Uh huh. Oh man, Bishop was not to be trifled with. Like, I right. love Pac as an actor as well. I thought he was unbelievable. I thought he would have gave us a so the, so, the hot, us so my hot take my hot take is that Pac's a better actor than rapper. It, it, it is a hot take because it's hard to say. Because I, I do think I think we were we we lost a lot obviously when he passed away of the art that he would have given us, and there would have been great music. I think we would have had some great performances on screen from him mm -hmm. he, he would have definitely won an academy award yeah he would have uh he would have done some some great things on screen as well so but but biggie's my guy oh yeah for sure okay what about kendrick or drake <laughs> 
Damn. Yo, no, shout outs to Jason Madison. This is not me. This is he's he's he had him ready for you. Got me in the hot seat right now. Uh I'm gonna go, I'm gonna uh, I, dude, when I talk about such a club. I, I mean I guess I would lean Kendrick, but like this is like it, it's 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 a coin flip. It really is. Drake Drake's been making my head my head move for, for a long time, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Knicks or Yankees? Currently, Knicks. When okay. I was a kid growing up, uh, before the Yankees went on that 90s, early 2000s run, because, right. you know, I remember the 80s as a Yankee fan was terrible. Okay. So I would have said Yankees back then, but right now, I mean, it's been Knicks for, for 15 years. Okay. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a Yankee guy, too. You know, we were celebrating the last time we got robbed. But, yeah. Um, Tough. What we got here, what we got here, what we got here. All right, I got one more. Uh, right. Hoodie or hoodie or cr crew neck? Oh, ho hoodie all day. Yes. I, gotta, I, mean, I got the crew. I got the Isley Brothers crew neck on right now, but you know, I'm definitely a hoodie boy for sure. Um, um, I, I mean, and that's been for me since. I mean, I remember. I literally remember the hoodie I used to rock when I was like 11. I wore that thing to death. It was blue. It was faded. It looked gray by the time I, my mom was done washing right. it 79 times. Man, for sure, man. Well, it looks like we're after the time. It's 5 p.m. I don't want to keep people in. You know, it's lovely Easter holidays and stuff like that. Plus, Westworld and uh, Insecure debuts yep. again, new season. So um, definitely want to check that out. But uh, I want to start this off, obviously, how we even got even more closer was uh, our relationships between, like, growing up with our fathers, right? Yeah. And uh, a lot of people may know or may not know that I lost my father at nine, very young, to gang violence. And uh, it was definitely a challenge looking for that next father figure um, and living in the inner city with all that stuff going on. It was hoops and leaps and bounds I had to go through to kind of stay focused. And you also lost your father uh, when you were very young. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, my dad uh, passed away when I was five years old. Uh, so that's going way back to 1985. And for those of you on here watching don't know, you know, 1985 was like, you know, height of Scarface generation. <laughs> you know, uh, it was uh, drugs related back then. Um, mm -hmm. And um, there was, you know, it, it was one of those things where, like, he left the house on Valentine's Day, like, kissed my mom and me and my brother and left and never came back. Like, it was that kind of wow. instant. And um, that's kind of always been the thing that's kept me, you know, like I said, I, I, mean, I smoked weed, but, like, hard drugs, all that stuff is just never my thing because I always knew that it kind of messed with my life as a kid. Right. But, uh and, you know, I was growing up in a neighborhood, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, in the 80s and 90s, that was a very, it, it wasn't violence, like, where you couldn't walk the streets or anything like that. But um, mm -hmm. there was a lot of kids who grew up tough with nothing, who didn't really have, who didn't even really care about themselves much. So they just had no fear. I wasn't really like that. I wasn't, like, the tough guy, although I had to fake it plenty. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was a mama's boy. So, like, I was so young, I, I didn't really start feeling all the stuff growing up without a father till like now until like the last, you know, I would say 10 years all throughout my thirties. I'm 40 now. That's when you really start to say like, wow, I kind of am like this. I wonder why. And you trace it back. It's like, it all kind of goes back to that. Everything that happens to you when you're younger kind of comes up when you're older. Yeah. And you're also a father now. So like that plays. Oh man. Try, try. I'll tell you like, I, I always, for me, having one parent was normal, right? I used to actually feel bad for my friends who had mm -hmm. two parents. Because like, man, you got to try to get over on your mom and dad. I only had one layer of security to break the rules, you know? I just had to trick my mom and I would be out of trouble. I always mm -hmm. looked at it like they got to get, they have two lines. But with with the kid now, I like, I, I, no one ever taught me how to be a dad. I'm literally doing what I thought I would have enjoyed when mm -hmm. I was a kid growing up, you know? And that's kind of the way I'm, I'm working through it. I'm like, man, this looks fun, like sitting here playing with, doing this little game for two hours. I didn't have that. I'm going to try doing that with them. But um, I think that the way I will come to terms with it, because I know you probably have, mm -hmm. it, it's something that you never really will come to terms with. Uh, but I think what will help me is being a dad. I will start to, I'm, not, I'm never going to have closure, 
but mm-hmm. I will at least start to feel like, all right, it impacted me in a positive way because I am determined to be a good father. Yeah, and also try to come home and, and you know, be there. And try well, to come home. Well, little Jay, yes. you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, if it's in my control, man, I will be home. I always say that, you know. Well, you know, I, I got to give you applause for that, man, you know, definitely. Appreciate it. <laughs> But that's you know a lot I mean? of what so, you and I talk about, you know, and we're, we're, we're two people who like kind of have an electronic relationship to a point, you know, but like you and I, I mean, we, I went through some of our texts, man. We get, we get deep. Yeah, like, no, we definitely get deep. You know what I mean? Especially like my dad's birthday is uh, April 14th. And you know what I mean? Like at nine, I always tell people, you know what I mean? When you get into it with your parents, you know what I mean? And it might not be as crazy. You know what I mean? But it's the luxury of even thinking about having parents or being able to being able to to even, you know, make up or whatever it is and have and have that person there. You know what I'm saying? My my situation, my mom had me at 15, my dad was 17. Seven years later, he's out of my life for good. Like, you know what I mean? And not going to prison. I didn't get to go see him in prison. I have maybe two memories in my mind that I can vaguely think about when we spent time together, but I was robbed of that opportunity. Do Your I dad have was it? 24 when he passed? Or 25? He, he was 25, 26. God. Now, so I lived that, and then also in a situation like, you know, shouts to my mom. My mom has been uh, sober for 20 plus years now. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? But beforehand, she had her own things and, um, she wasn't there. So I was raised by my grandma. And again, when you become a man of a certain age, you're curious about the certain actions that you make. You know what I mean? Like during those times, I was kind of um, less affectionate. Yeah. Um, You know, where did I get my humor from? Why do I have certain anger rages? I wanted to know where I got that from. You know what I mean? And it took time, but it's also a frustration because I can't sit down and talk to my dad like, and be like, all right, you know what? I get this from my old man. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm with you. Like, I have, I have like five memories, I think I would say, that I mm-hmm. know are real. And then there's like three that I potentially made up or dreamed about. Like, I, like I have these other memories. I, I, there's like one I have. I tell, I ask my mom about it. I ask my brother. They're like, oh, we don't ever remember that happening. I think I might have maybe in my own little kid imagination made it up. But I'll tell you when, I told you I was going to tell you a story via text that I've never really told anyone before. Uh, I don't even know if this is a good story, but how I knew, because again, growing up with a mom, just just your mom was totally yeah. normal to me. And my mom did a great job. Like, I was happy as a kid. Like, I didn't really know what I was missing because she did such a great job. But how I knew things were maybe a little different for me is I think I was around like 10, 11 years old, and I was playing uh, – street hockey in the street right one of the few times mm-hmm. i ever played street hockey and there's like six or seven of us playing goofing around like kids mm-hmm. all on skates or whatever and i got into like a little hockey fight with the kid but when i tell you it was like the most playful thing like you pull the jersey over the head we're not like punching each other in the face but like i kind of got on top of them like holding them down laughing but it wasn't like i said it wasn't violence it was little kids being being silly and i mm-hmm. guess what i didn't know is the kid's father was watching from oh, wow. his front door. And Trey, I mean, that's when you know, like, when you're a kid, when you feel like man strength. I want to tell you, I got picked up oh, wow. by, like, and flung into a tree. My shoulder bashed into the tree, had a little cut on my head. He threw me. He threw me probably four feet in the Jeez. air. And I-, I was, like, in shock. I turned around, like, just to see what the hell that was. And I look, and I see, obviously, I'm not going to mention that. I see this grown-ass man. And I was just stunned. Even though my friends are, like, everyone's mouths are open, everything. So, takes his son inside. My friends help me up. And they're like, who are you going to tell? Who are you going to tell? Like, you got to tell someone to go go do something, back you up. I'm like, I just remember skating home, like, tears in my eyes being like, shit, am I going to tell my mom? Like, what's my mom Yeah, like, do? like, yo, is That's... my mom really the enforcer? And Which... you know what? Trey, I know why. I mean, I and look, I did have male influences that I could have told that would have mm-hmm. maybe escalated the situation way further than it needed to be. Right. And I told my mom, and my mom went and rang the bell, 
and they had some words. I don't know what was said, mm -hmm. but every time I walked in the street, when that that father, I would see him, he would like cross the other way. He wouldn't even make eye contact with me. So whatever yeah. my mom said, shook his ass up. But at that point, it's where I knew I'm like, all right, I'm gonna have to figure some things out for right. myself, you know? Yeah. Uh, but again, that's no disrespect. My mom very well might be watching that. Like moms are probably the best people you could tell in that situation because uh, I do believe when um, uh, any parent, but when a mother's kids are threatened, I think a mother could go to a place Bro, it's nothing, nothing like not a mother's love, to for get real. To. Yeah, I think a mom could pick up a car if their kid was under there if she had to. So, uh, But it was scary. That was scary, man. That was, that was the first time I was scared in my life from, like, another human. Mm, man, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to move on from the deep conversation. Hopefully everyone enjoyed that. Uh, so me and you both have something in common, as you can see video games oh hell yeah <laughs> all right so what i want to know <clears throat> what was the first game that got you into video games uh well i'm from like the nintendo generation so obviously all the super mario brothers and everything but the game that really wrote me in was mike tyson's punch out so i'm going way back great man. game going way back i still remember the code to okay. get right up to mike tyson and if you guys want to question my knowledge, it's 0073735963. Type that in. You go straight to Mike Tyson. I typed that in a thousand times in my and life. You, and you lose. Get knocked out. Oh, man. But that time I beat him. I'm talking like Little Mac was my Halloween costume for oh, most yeah, of my yeah, life. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, once I beat Iron Mike, yeah, I, I was just locked in from there. And I even remember being a kid, like, I'll be at a friend's house playing. At the time, it was like a RBI baseball, one of those old – old sports games i remember being like man i wish like i could go home for dinner and like homework and stuff but then i could like play my friend joe from up the street but like he's in his house and i'm in my house like i was dreaming of like online gaming like just praying it would one oh, day man. be a thing man so uh funny story i guess i'll start off with um it's like 92 the christmas so my dad was still alive but he would what he would do normally is just drop a duffel bag full of stuff. So I got the Nintendo, like 80 games. I don't know how I got it, whatever. It's hey, crazy. but you got it. That's all that matters. It was cool, right? I'm like, cool. But I was a latchkey kid. My grandma was a um, housekeeper. So she would be gone to like 5 p.m. And I had the like house, the spot. So um, for people that don't know, latchkey kids are pretty much, you wear a key around your neck, you mm -hmm. come home and it's like dinner is a, probably a TV dinner. And don't let nobody else in. Well, what I would do, I would sneak and let my friends Chico and, and a couple other people that were uh, around, and we would play Sega Genesis, etc. So uh, during this Christmas time, my grandma's like, "We got you a book, <laughs> but it's wrapped. It's wrapped up, and you know how the old Sega boxes used to be. Oh, so, God, they were, yeah. So I'm, I'm like." A book? a book like are you kidding me i'm seven i don't really want to read a book and i'm like tearing it up and i and I, i'm like yo wait there's no pages it's sonic 2 Ooh. oh hey, man so Life sonic made. 2 you plug the controller in your boy can play you were the you man control tails i, I still remember like that shit was crazy then i got the lock on technology and, and got into more games and 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 the thing was was that, which is funny, would probably help me with my uh, basketball um, broadcasting career. What we would do, shouts to Curtis and everybody else that would come over and play the game. You could create a player. Yeah, I would make all the trades. I would get every newspaper, every bracket book that had all the rosters, and then I would create every rookie that was coming into the next year. I used to do the same so shit, So I would know man. every player's stats, <laughs> how good they were, you know what I mean? And, like, I think it helped my knowledge now because how I just look at it, like, oh, okay, I should be worried about the 14 player trying to make this team or a guy on a two-way contract or a guy doing this or a guy doing that. And, you know, in that particular situation, like, it paid off. But video games, video games to this day, I just got back on Twitch. Right? Yes, let's and go. 
Call of Duty, we've been playing. Everybody's like, yo, you got to get on. I haven't been getting on as much as I should, but uh, I'm getting better. Um, I'm ready for you whenever you want to squad. Hey, man, I, we, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going ready. live right after this with, with who, Miro. Who are you going live with? I'm going Who's... live. I got, the, I got a dream team tonight, man. I'm going live with my man Kid Miro and okay. Donovan Mitchell tonight, okay. right after this, like 20 minutes from now, whenever we're done. We're going okay. right on Twitch Warzone. We're going to get some dubs. See, I'm, I'm definitely tuning in to that. All right, so we talk video games. Let's talk about sneakers. Ooh, okay. Now, what was the name of the shoes you had in Entourage? Those are those. Are, <laughs> I, love, I love it. I love it. those are the Pookie Jamas, man. The Pookie Jamas, right? The Pookie Jamas, right? Yeah. <sighs> man, that's a. <laughs> do you want, do you want to see about... some heat live? Do you want me to bust some yes, heat out? Right yes, yes. Please, please show shoot, you show. You would you you would think I did this on purpose, man. All right, so you'll know about these, right? Um, and it's actually kind of fitting, obviously. Um, you know, we're all everyone's still missing Kobe Bryant. Um, mm -hmm. And that was as tragic as it gets. Uh, but when he retired, you know, they made a Jordan pack for him mm. during his retirement. And okay. I think they only made, I want to say, like 300 pair, something like that. And I don't know how, like every now and then I would, I, I would, I would get hooked up with some real fire. And then I would go, it would go away for a while and came back. One day I go out on my doorstep and this Kobe pack shows up on my door. And to this day, it is still some of the most fire. I mean, look at this. Look at this box. The box alone, right? You got the two, three, and the two, four. I'm going to try to bust it out. I don't know, see how my camera work is going to be while doing this. Uh, so here we go right here. Okay. We got two nice little bags. So we got eights and threes, right? Okay. I'm doing this okay, with one so, hand. So here oh, are the wow. eights right here. I mean, come on. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's the that's the free agent year. That's the yep. free agent year he wore those. Oh two, oh two, oh three. These are the real. I actually wore these when I played in the celebrity all star game. So I LA. remember us having a conversation about what shoe you was gonna wear. The threes. The man. threes. Oh, these things yeah. are, with the little gold right there. Yeah, that's so killer. obviously you know. I mean, I I treat these things with a lot of respect, and then you know, these things will never touch the ground again. But um. So yeah, sneakers have always been a big part of my life. Sorry, I kind of interrupted your question. Oh no, 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 that was perfect. I that forgot perfect. I had these. What's socks. on? What's on your feet now? Oh, I, right now I actually got socks on. So okay, it's, so, it's eight o'clock right, in New right. York. All right, but, so, um, the, so the funny thing about it, I haven't wore sneakers in like a month. A month, like oh. I've been like in in my Suco sandals or some Crocs. And I just been about comfort at this point, but man, I do miss wearing shoes for, you know, people to be like, oh yeah, those dope. Yeah, I've been, uh, you know, because I'm not going out much, but every now and then I'll take the kid for like a quick little walk. I, when I'm like comfort stuff like that, I go Air Max, mm -hmm. kind of like the dad shoe. But you know where my heart is. I'm a Jordans guy through and through. Right. Uh, still got love for Air Force Ones too. Wore mm -hmm. those on Entourage for, I mean, a decade. Yeah, and uh, that's what the Fuki John and the Fuki John. Do you are, have Do you have the Fuki Jamas too? Yeah. Oh, see. Man. Of course. So there was obviously in that episode, which I always have a fond place for that episode because that was also one of the first times on television, and I could say this with pretty certain, with certainty. That was the first time on a television show. This is oh six oh seven mm -hmm. where we showed like the shoe culture with like the dudes and, and girls waiting online for hours. Like it was like the opening to star Wars or something. Like right. everyone knew about that. It was like a kind of a thing. It was starting to become public more on the internet, but like we showed it on HBO. So okay. in that episode, you know, Tur my character turtle misses out on the original pair mm -hmm. of pajamas, limited 500 pair drop. And then I get the one of ones. So, the 500 pair drop, I think they actually made about 500 of those. You'll mm -hmm. see those floating around on the internet. I'll get, I'll get tweets or posts on Instagram like, yo, did you sell your shoes? I'm like, no, there's 500 of them. People yeah, have like, them. come on, man, be serious. But yeah. the gold Fuki Jamas. Uh, oh, wow. So I have the ones that I'm actually holding on the show that mm -hmm. are one of one. Um, in total, I believe there was either, I think there was six. There was one for the four guy, for the four of us, and I think, two of our producers, maybe Wahlberg too. I'm not sure if Wahlberg got a pair, but there's either six or eight in total. 
Okay. And but I have the ones that I wore that I show on screen in the wooden box uh, with all the writing and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, those things are tucked away. Oh yeah, I'm sure, man. Man, that's that's cool, man. Definitely, I'm 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 shocked that you still got them shoes, though. I mean, obviously you wouldn't let them go. That's a prized possession. No. Um, now I got some uh, some some other good questions. Uh, again from Jason. Shout out to Jason. Um, who has been your favorite on-screen love interest? Uh, you know what? I haven't had many of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will say. Uh, hmm. My favorite. I mean, I did. I, I love the uh, the Jamie Lynn Sigler stuff in The Sopranos when she came on mm -hmm. the show because that was a situation where, uh, you know, the whole thing was like my character. Like you could never get a girl mm -hmm. like that. So I got to play the underdog there, mm -hmm. and we had we had a lot of good chemistry. Uh, yeah, I would say I would say Jamie Lynn. I mean, again, I haven't had many of them. I'm not often like, oh, well, look, what did I say? Look. I'm sorry. I didn't think I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We could stick with that answer, but I just remembered a little movie called Think Like a Man. Okay. Gab, you, so Gabrielle Union, like, I want. I almost quit that movie in the beginning because I'm like, there's no way people are gonna think that I and that, my character, your character, got Gabrielle Union. Like, it's yeah. just not gonna work. And then Will Packard, the producer, was like, yeah, but that's kind of the point. Yeah. Like you have this dream girl and you're not, you haven't proposed to her yet and everyone thinks you're an idiot. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, if, you, if I'm an idiot, then I'm, I get it. All right. But yeah. I, I was worried. I'm like, yeah, really, people are going to see us be like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. There are a couple. I buy that. But um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go Gab, who is one of my, my good friends to this day. Good people. One of the, one of the best hangs of all time. All right. Uh, what item did you collect as a kid? Uh. I didn't really collect like sneakers back then because I just didn't have it like that. Um, I, you know, outside of like my wrestling figures, like I was a big WW back then. It was WWF. WWF, yeah. Uh, wrestling figures, Ninja Turtles, and a uh, baseball card. I was a big baseball card guy. Okay. See, we grew up the same. Yep. Um, at, at what point did you realize Entourage was a big deal? Ah. <sighs> uh, there was, I think there was a moment, I want to say, I think it was season three, or maybe season two, actually. And uh, we were in Vegas shooting something. And at that point, I didn't know if anybody was even watching the show, to be honest. I was just happy we had, I had a job. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was just like a group of people like sectioned off, like 200 people in this pool area where we were shooting and we were shooting over here. And they weren't like extras or anything. They were just hanging at the pool and they were kind of like, well, and like, they all just started like chanting our names, like doing like like a pro team like fire okay. up chat. And I'm like, wow, people are actually watching this uh, this show. It wasn't overnight; it was a slow build, but there was a distinct feeling around like the end of season two, where I'm like walk around, I'm, like I'm getting a lot of love in the street, man. I think people are starting to watch this shit. Yeah. All right. Um, how does it feel having the most uh, acting success post Entourage? Uh, I, look, I don't know if that's necessarily true because I, I think everyone's kind of focus has been where where they wanted to be, right? Pretty much. Yeah, I think it's been you know you look at Kevin Connolly. Kevin Connolly's doing great things in the podcast. Where he started a podcast network, okay. you know, Action Park Media. That's kind I need of to, I need to talk to him. Then. <laughs> you definitely. By the way, you definitely need to. I mean, they got they got podcasts going up all over the place. Um, you know, I think Adrian obviously Grenier is is. is you know, humanitarian at heart, you know, he's an environmental advocate. Mm -hmm. He's, he's, he's always, I don't know where he would even have time to act. I mean, but right. he does still. Okay. Uh, but I just, you know, I just kept trying to grind. I knew we had the luxury of knowing when Entourage was going to end like a year and a half in advance. It was like, you're going to finish this. It was almost like an athlete. I knew how long my contract was. Like you got the rest of this year and one mm -hmm. more and you guys are done. Yeah. So that's when I started getting in a little better shape and, you know, doing some indies and small parts because I knew I was going to have to change a little bit of the perception because, you know, people see you as one thing, particularly on television. They think that's all you could do. And 
it's frustrating, but also it's kind of like a good challenge. Like, I like that. I like those circumstances. Like, okay, you think that's, that's my one move? Well, mm -hmm. you didn't see what else I was working on. I do think actors, similar to like athletes and basketball players, need to add something every year, like a new move. Mm -hmm. So I always tried to, uh, tried to, uh, to do that. And that's kind of what led me to power and the whole, you know, playing a lawyer. Like, that's like my first grown up character. Yeah, hey man, the black community love you, man. <laughs> hey, you, listen. Hey, you I, went out like I love a G. being loved by the black community. Let me hey, tell you. Hey, you went cause... out. You went out like a G because I, I consider, I consider entourage people, black people who had cable know you from entourage. <laughs> <laughs> but then that's like I feel like the white people, and then think like a man, obviously, and then the power they like Proctor. So when I was actually even telling people that I knew, like, yo, I'm gonna have Jerry Ferrara, they like, who? I said Proctor. Oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 that's my, yeah. Yes, and isn't that kind of crazy? Like, I am, like, you talk about, like, typecasting and all that shit, right? Like, mm -hmm. I am certainly, many would think, like, oh, you're, you're a turtle. You play turtle. Like, that's a typecasting. And then there's a whole other audience. Like, and also, like, the age gap, right? Like, power, yeah. I feel like, skews younger than, like, entourage fans now are, like, my age, like, 35, 40 and up. And mm -hmm. power fans, to, I've, well, power fans are all ages, but I feel like they skew a little younger. And there's this whole other audience that just, they know me as Proctor. If they heard Turtle, they'd be like, who? Yeah. What? No, that's Proctor. So it's awesome, man. It changes like street to street when I'm walking. Like, yeah, no, I'm definitely, I'm listening. You, you invited to the Black Cookout, straight up. I'll, and guess what? I will be there. <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right. Uh, what did you do with all the hats from Entourage? So Entourage kind of ruined hats for me because... Okay. I, you know, I wore a hat almost every episode. You only saw my hair like a handful of times. People used to think okay. I was bald. Oh, shit. Um, and, you know, mainly rock the Yankee hat. So, I mean, man, if I walk around with a Yankee hat with a slight tilt, yeah. if I if I was trying to avoid being called turtle, yeah, that's out. Like, yeah. most actors wear a hat to go incognito. I'm actually more recognizable with a hat on. Yeah. yeah okay. There you go. There you go. All right, um, what's your favorite movie show about Hollywood? My favorite movie or show about Hollywood? Mm-hmm. Not counting, I'm not going to count Entourage, right? Um, yeah. Just a good question. Um, Shout out to Jason with this question. It's a good, you, well, uh, trying, I'm trying not to screw this up. Um, Swimming with Sharks is a good one. Uh... I don't know, man. Entourage just stands out to me. Yeah. I can't think. I'm trying to think of something yeah. else. What's your? Give me a suggestion. Like, I'm sure I've seen it. I'm like blanking. Man. About like Hollywood. Um, I don't really know. I don't know. Extras was obviously good, but not really about Hollywood. Episodes was a good show. Um, yes. Everybody's saying once, uh, once upon a time or episodes. Yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to go episodes. Okay. All right. Um, if you could relive one moment in your childhood, what would it be? <sighs> wow. That's heavy, man. Uh, childhood. So we're talking like what, like, un like under what, like under 15 kind of? Mm, I would say, like I, I would say six, I would say six, 15, 16 under. Man, there was one time when my friends and I were like 15 years old, and one of my friends, uh, actually who the turtle character, uh, his, uh, I, I kind of based him on and ended up being his real name, which was Salvatore Asante, right? Okay. Who, uh, he actually passed away way too young at 23 years old. Mm. And his parents had like a house in Pennsylvania, like the Poconos, like a ski house, right? Okay. So we were like 15 years old. And we had like two friends who were 17 who had driver's licenses. So he and his parents never went up there, you know, maybe like once every other month or so. He swiped the keys one time. And mm -hmm. we all basically like told our parents we were sleeping at someone's house. We got our two 17 year old friends who had cars. We went up there. We packed like 15 kids in each car. We went to this mm -hmm. house, 30 of us, and just, just kind of partied for the whole weekend. And like That's it sick. was so it just was so much fun it was like really like the last moment we were like truly young kids because a lot of shit changed after that yeah, i like to relive sure. that that would be a fun weekend to go relive okay um and i'm gonna do this every show for people that's tuning in um what advice would you have for uh 18 year old jerry 
<sighs> okay. First, I would say uh, don't loan everybody money. All right. Okay. What you don't know when you're younger is like, this is how I would tell anyone now. Like, if you're, if I'm not saying don't help people, right? Like, you should help people if you can, people who truly need it. But at some point, you know, you start to look at it and say, is, is, is almost, is this almost like why we're still friends? It, it clouds the mind. Money does a lot of stupid shit. But right. I would say now, if your friend asks you to borrow a thousand dollars, let's just say, which is a lot of money, right? Mm hmm. He's not asking you, or she's not asking you to borrow a thousand dollars. You, especially in the acting business, right? Because you right. get taxes, commission, which is, could be 20, 25 percent. So your friend's actually asking you to borrow two thousand dollars. So for you to clear a thousand, you had to go make two thousand. Yeah. So when you start much. thinking about it like that, it changes. So I would say that, and then I would say, I would say, man, just just relax and enjoy it. I was always so afraid when I was in this, these great moments that it was mm -hmm. all going to get taken away from me. I was like paranoid almost. I just, I, I just, cause I knew what it took to get there. And I was worried it was all going to go away in a blink. That's why I really tried to never get in trouble and, and just stay the course. But then there came a point where it's like, man, this is flying by. You're missing it. So right. around like season six, seven of Entourage, I really started stopping and smelling the roses and enjoying it mm -hmm. because uh, I felt a little more safe, but I would just tell 18 or like, Slow down, enjoy it a little more, man. It's gonna go quicker than you think. Man, well, we we hit our quota of thirty minutes, man. I appreciate you so much, brother. You know what I mean. I got Hopefully. one request. One request. Yes, sir. I want to be the first repeat guest because we got a lot more to talk about. Oh man, absolutely. We definitely can get you back on, bro. Definitely. All right. Definitely. Thank That's you so much, request. man. My pleasure. Keep doing this, man. This is.